So agenda for today, I'm going to do a little intro. I'm not going to make it a ton, two, three minutes about myself. This isn't about me. This is about two things, how to source as many leads as you want and how to do as many deals as you want to. But my specialty is off-market real estate. I've been doing that since really 2018. Started out, got my license, aided that, and uh, have gone on to do a couple hundred deals since 2018 across different asset classes, all off-market. I've never bought in a deal on market never done a deal on market. And so everything I'm going to be talking about today is designed specifically for creating as much deal flow as possible fully off market. So to start you guys, I want to give you just just a bit of why I'm licensed, so to speak, to talk about this stuff. Uh, all I've done for the past seven years of my life is spend all my brain energy on creating as many leads as possible and building companies around off market real estate. It's one of the harder businesses to scale, as I'm sure you guys watching this know, um, especially when the market turns like it does right now. Um, sellers tense up. There's just is not a, there's not as many deals around, and people are pretty limited to wholesalers posting in Facebook groups or getting a massive email blast that everyone else in the in the world gets, which I'm not a big fan of. And so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to touch on today. Um, to start, you guys, I'm going to go through two different tracks for every topic I talk about. I'm going to be talking about single family and commercial. Um, so if I go over, for example, the systems and tech stack on the single family side. I'm going to also talk about that right after on the commercial side. I'm going to go back and forth that way all the way through. So whether you're buying single family to fix, whether you're buying single family to build your portfolio, duplexes, fourplexes, all the way up to multifamily, industrial, and commercial assets, I'm going to be going over A through Z, our systems, our marketing, our sales process, um, our funnels, data, everything that I know that I've accumulated over the past seven years, um, which has allowed us to build our real estate companies and then have gone on to do other companies. My companies combined, um, do north of $5 million per year. They're not all in real estate, but combined. And we have over 200 people that work for us now using a lot of the things I'm teaching today around building a team and, um, things that I'm already seeing some questions come in. I'm already seeing some questions around, is this going to be recorded? Yes, this is going to be recorded, not only recorded, but if you are in here and we have your email, you are going to get a free course talking about everything I go over today. Okay. So you don't have to worry about taking perfect notes. Um, so you guys will be good to go. So starting it out, um, let's, let's talk uh, systems. So the number one thing that I see when I work with a real estate investor of any kind is they don't have any systems. You guys will be shocked. I've worked with some hedge funds on the off-market acquisition side. When I go into their CRM, they don't have one or it's an absolute mess. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is systems and understanding what software you need to be successful. And again, I'm going to talk about single family and then commercial for every point. I talk about over the next hour, hour and a half, two hours. I don't care if this takes two and a half hours. I'm going to get through everything I have written down to go over with you guys. Um, I don't want anything left out here. So systems. The first thing that you guys have to have when it comes to sourcing off-market deals is a CRM. A CRM is a customer relationship management system. There's a million of them out there. The main thing um, that you have to understand is more complex is not better. I don't need you to go buy a $10,000 Salesforce build out. I don't need you to go buy an insane CRM system. I'm going to give you three right now in real estate that I've seen work great across any asset class. Okay. Number one is Podio, P-O-D-I-O. That is free. Um, but that also has paid versions. You can buy build outs, but for most people in here, even a free Podio real estate pack is going to be light years beyond what you're most likely using right now for your business. The second one, um, if you want to get a little more complex, you can go buy like a custom preset CRM something like a forefront CRM, follow a boss, or one of those out there. Um, the third one, if you really want to get fancy, there's something called Left Main. It's a Salesforce CRM build out um, designated for real estate investors. But it's super fancy, costs thousands of dollars. And most of you guys, even if you're doing, even if you're doing millions and millions of dollars per year in real estate deals, most of you guys don't need something fancy, but you do need a CRM system, 100%. Second thing, and, I, and some of this stuff's going to be pretty boring, Okay. Um, the second thing you need is a, uh, just a, a warehousing system, somewhere to keep all of your files. Cause I've seen most investors don't even have that. And so what I like to teach is set up a Google, Google drive or a Dropbox with, with by month with every file on every deal ever. You don't know three years from now, you might need a transaction, a PSA an addendum and be able to access that stuff quickly as well as pictures and whatnot. On the commercial side and the CRM side, really for, for the people we work with in the commercial space, same exact CRM systems work, single family, you have Podio, you have, um, you know, the, the mid, mid tier, like follow a boss, um, forefront, and then you can get very complicated and you can go, go high level Salesforce builds out, build outs, things of that nature. 
Uh, moving on from systems, you guys, basic data. So um, one of the reasons that I've been successful through every market cycle in sourcing deals is because of outbound marketing. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys to go spend a ton of money on digital ads or go spend a ton of money on Facebook ads or go spend a ton of money on Zillow leads and all, uh, all that stuff. Because to me, that's not predictable. And we want to focus on predictable, scalable marketing channels that work no matter what market cycle we're in, what's happening up, down, good, bad. And that's the reality because real estate's cyclical, right? We are in a business that's so dependent on the real estate market. We have to build our business and our systems around that. I've seen so many people in our industry, if you guys are watching this, I'm guessing you're in the real estate space. I've seen so many people fail, lose, and get burnt out because they build a business for a three-year period, not for no matter what happens in the, in the macro real estate market. Because the reality is it changes every five, 10 years. It's going to be a completely different market. And you don't want to have to rebuild your business for every single market. And if you're watching this, the whole point of this, so you can build a business, right? Not a hustle, not the hamster wheel, not the thing I've seen my whole life of real estate brokers and people chasing down the next deal until they're 75 years old. But how do you build a business, an actual asset that you own that does real estate deals so you can use that vehicle and that machine to do as many deals and build the wealth you want? Because the reality of it, you guys, you can make a lot of money. You can get rich doing real estate deals, doing flips, building houses, being a broker. You can get rich that way, right? You can get rich by what you do. But you only get wealthy by what you own. And I've seen it firsthand by from family members that they never actually create something that they own. They're chasing down deals their whole life. And what happens is they get to 60, 65 years old. They go, oh shit, well, what's going on here? Why don't I have anything to fall back on? Because they're not building a business. They're not building assets. They're not doing any of that. So a lot of what I teach today and the second half of this this presentation is going to be all about building your team and mostly using virtual assistants around the world for three to five dollars an hour. I have over a hundred people that work for me personally in my companies that get paid between three dollars and ten dollars an hour. And before you start calling me, I, I could call all kinds of names for that stuff on YouTube and stuff. But the reality is you go to these countries, it's life changing. It's life changing for them and it's life changing for your business because the reality is unless you're doing millions and millions of dollars per year, most people can't afford to go higher someone that's $100,000, $150,000 a year. And, and honestly, even in most places, that's not even top tier labor right now. So second thing, guys, is data. Okay, data on the prospects that we want to target. And there's a couple of different types of data. We have base data, right? When I, we talk about marketing, we have base data, we have predictive data, and we have what I call warm data or hot data. So what base data is, whether you're doing commercial or residential, Base data is just basic data points. They don't, they're not going to predict someone's going to sell, but they're data points in your target audience, in the assets you want to go after. And so basic data, single family could be homes that are built between 1980 and 1995 that are a single level that have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a certain zip code. That could be your farm area. That could be the area you want to market to. Okay. On the commercial side, that could be multifamily buildings between five and $10 million, basic data. So the first thing you guys have to do before we get too deep down the rabbit hole is understand what you're going after. Okay. Single family or commercial, what you are targeting and why you are targeting that. So many people get into real estate. Again, this goes back to the hamster wheel. They don't have a what and a why. So what is the what of the, of what you're doing? If you're flipping houses, okay, that's awesome. But are you trying to do 20 flips a year so you can make $700,000 a year and travel and spend more time with your family? Or are you trying to build a machine that can do 30, 40, 50 deals a year and build it as, as, a, as a massive company. That's the what and the why. You guys have to understand the what and the why of what you're building. If you don't, you're gonna be on the hamster wheel forever. And um, so you have to understand what, what you're buying. That's the basic data. What's your buy box? And why why is that your buy box? Let me go into predictive data. So these are things that give us a leg up on other people on why someone might wanna sell their house. And most of the reason I've had success isn't because I've had some crazy marketing channel no one else has or some cool magical software no one else has. The reality of it, I've had success because we focus on predictive data and we market to people who have shown indication of wanting to sell their home and at scale. Reality is most people, you guys, you can't really pull a list of someone who's going through a lot of the life situations that, that make them sell. But usually people aren't selling for one reason. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten layers of motivation stacked on top of each other what's causing them to sell an asset. That could be financial, that could be situational, relational, whatever's going on in their life. Usually it's going to be a combination of three, four, five, six, seven, ten things. So what we want to do is we want to give ourselves the best chance by finding a few of those, letting those lead in to the rest of the things that may make them want to sell 
and give us a better place to spend our marketing dollars. And if you're watching this, I am, you're going to have to spend money on marketing. That's the reality of it. And my thing is, I think marketing is an investment, not an expense. What I mean by that is so many people, real estate investors never scale because they're so afraid to write that $5,000 check for leads, or that $10,000 checks for, for lead. But guess what, you guys, we're in such a, um, a the, the liquidity events in this business are so, so, so uh, incredibly big most of the time that you can spend money on marketing and it is an investment. I get pumped every time I spend or raise our marketing budget because if you know, if, the problem is you're not okay with risk because if you knew, I told you, you're for sure going to get a 3, 4x um, return on your marketing, which a lot of you guys are in real estate, even if you're pretty, you, you suck pretty bad at sales, you're still going to get a 3, 4x return. If I told you every single year you could spend $100,000 on marketing to get four or $500,000 back, you'd do it problem is the risk. But statistically, I'm telling you, I've seen guys that, what's a nice way to put it, are not the, the, the smartest peas in the pod, make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year just because they think of marketing as an investment in their business, not an expense. Okay. So let's talk about predicted data sets, guys. So predict, predicted data sets on the single family side, one of the most expensive, but the, one of the best is Audantic. Okay. That's A-U-D-A-N-T-I-C. And if you're not, if you're not doing a million dollars a year in revenue, revenue meaning dollars that come into your business, but then you pay expenses, then you pay yourself. If you're not doing a million dollars or more per year on revenue, I don't recommend using something like Audantic because it's very expensive. But Audantic is essentially, it's machine learning, looking at all the different data points of why someone might sell their property. Okay. And it's going to rank those for you. Someone just asked how expensive you guys, I'm going to answer a lot of questions at the end. So if you're, if you have questions right now, just write them down and then type them out at the end. And I'm going to go through solid 20, 30 minutes of just questions, but I want to make sure we get through all these topics before I do. After Audantic, we have Prospect Now. Um, ProspectNow.com, it's a step below Audantic. It's still a predictive data set. Okay, what I mean by that is it still has machine learning built in. A lot of these companies use AI too to predict who's going to sell their home. And that's, a, that's a, a little less expensive, but it's still pretty good quality. Okay, then we have a really flow product. Okay, really flow, they have um, AI scored systems on likely to sell. Um, and uh, they're pretty good as well. Uh, really flow, it's R E A L flow.com. They also have a predictive data set about who may sell their house before other people. Those are like the best predictive data sets out there. If you want to get really expensive, you guys, a lot of you guys know what driving for dollars is driving around and finding properties that are beat up, whatever asset class you, you play in. The reality is, it's hard to drive for dollars at scale. And so I, I was always looking for a solution um, to, to speed that up and build driving for dollars teams. I just couldn't figure it out. Until about, I would say a year ago, um, I met someone who worked at a company named Weiss Analytics. And what Weiss Analytics is, it's a single family focused analytics platform. So this doesn't work for commercial, just single family. And what they do, they have a product called Val Pro Plus. So if you go to Weiss Analytics, you go to Val Pro Plus, and what it is, it's real, tight, real time satellite imaging. So they pay for access to satellites. And what they do is they rank properties on a zero to seven score on how much physical, visual distress the property is from a satellite image, looking at things like tarps on the roof, looking at things like cars in the lots, looking at things um, like, is there uh, overgrown vegetation everywhere? Is there a pool that looks green instead of blue like it's supposed to look? Are there holes in the roof? Um, so looking at distress, things like that, they predict out um, the likelihood of physical, of asset distress based on that. That's called Val Pro Plus by Val Price Analytics. Pretty pricey, but I we've done a lot of testing with them and they have a really good um, product. It's Val Pro Plus by Weiss, W-E-I-S-S -S Analytics. Um, you type that into Google, it'll come up with their website and you'll see the product I'm talking about. Okay, commercial side. Commercial side, we don't have Weiss Analytics. We don't have Audantic. So there's really only one good predictive data set that I like on the commercial side. That is Prospect Now. Um, you do have Reonomy. Reonomy is technically, does have some predictive features. I'm going to talk more about Reonomy later but it's not what I call a predictive data set when it comes to marketing for commercial and um, uh, uh, residential assets, okay? Uh, the next thing we have is um, uh, after, is, uh, is a hot data or warm data. And this is looking at the as good as situational and life distress we can find. So the best place for single family that I found is called foreclosuresdaily.com. They'll give you a fresh list monthly of divorces. I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. They'll give you a fresh list monthly of divorces, probates, tax delinquents that are actually accurate. A lot of these sources like PropStream, 
and things of that nature. They'll give you these distress lists, but they just aren't that accurate. So we found that foreclosures daily is by far a better option um, on the single family side of things for those hot lists. You can also find a lot of them on PropStream on list source though. Then we have the commercial side, you guys, on the commercial side of a hot list. Um, we have it. There's no like perfect way. You can get a lot of the data from Reonomy, but we don't really look for as much uh, as much of that end on the commercial side as we do on the residential end of things. Then we have our base list sets. And so for single family, where I want you guys to get your base list, this is your absentees, meaning they don't live in the asset they own. This is your vacant homes, things of that nature. I like listsource.com or PropStream on the single family side. I keep it simple. On the commercial side, I like Reonomy. Okay, um, Reonomy is a pretty expensive platform, but if you buy the base plan on there, you can build a scraper for about a grand, um, and we can share ours with you that actually you set up on your computer and it's able to scrape records um, in real time for you guys and pull out um, as many records as you want from the system, which helps at scale. But Reonomy is like the gold standard when it comes to commercial data. I don't love um, uh, open corporates or other things. And I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a little bit about uh, scraping that data a little later on. So then, we guys, we, we have the big we have a big conundrum, right? I focus on outbound marketing, meaning um, ways that we can initiate contact with people. Okay, so with that, we need phone numbers, we need emails, and I'm still going to talk about all the marketing channels. But because I'm so f outbound marketing focused, because I like to be able to force the issue, that to me creates a predictable pipeline, creates a, a predictable way to hire, and creates a predictable company. I want to focus on um, creating that at scale. So we need phone numbers and emails. And on the single family side, that's that's pretty easy. Um, the service that we use internally um, is easybuttonskiptrace.com. Uh, it's spelled just like it sounds, easybuttonskiptrace.com. And it gives you back phone numbers and emails. Very simple. We're also going to send out an email to everyone in here with a discount for that as well. Um, everything I'm talking about, you guys, I see a lot of questions. You are going to get a full package after this with a free course, resources, and discount codes for everything I'm talking about. Um, so easy button skip trace, it'll send you back. You take your data from list source, you take your data from all these other places and, um, it'll, it'll feed you back within 15 minutes. It'll feed you back phone numbers and emails, no matter how big the file is on the commercial side it's a little more complicated because the first thing we have to do is crack the LLC. Okay. Because a lot of commercial assets are owned L under LLCs. So, uh, the first thing we want to do, you guys is crack that LLC. The second thing we need to do is find the phone numbers and emails for every person associated with that to give ourselves the best chance of getting in touch with the decision maker for that asset. There's two ways to crack an LLC. There's a free way. You can go to opencorporates.com and you can single search LLCs and you can work your way down the rabbit hole and find out the actual registered agents or who's the actual mailing address for that LLC. Okay. The second way is you can um, hire someone off upwork.com, which I'll talk a lot, lock a, a lot about more later, who can sit on that single search and look up properties all day, they can probably get three to 500 done a day in terms of cracking LLCs. A third way is I built an automated system for this through the same platform, Easy Button Skip Trace, that we do that all for you. So you you submit a list, we crack the LLC, we skip trace all three or four people, you get back the results on that. You can also reverse skip trace, which means whether it's a single family house or a commercial building, you give us an email, we'll give you back phone numbers address. You give us a phone number, we'll give you back emails and addresses. You give us an address, we'll give you phone numbers and emails um, for both, ath both asset classes. That's contact info. So residential and, and, and commercial, commercial is a lot harder. You have to go through that first step of cracking LLCs before you skip trace because most commercial assets that are not mom and pop owned are going to be owned under some kind of LLC. And if you guys want to do off-market deals, you need as many prospects as possible. It's a volume game. Marketing is a volume game. I just want to talk a little bit more right now because I'm talking about sequential marketing. Um, I still see questions coming in, you guys. I'm going to uh, answer all of these, scroll through towards the end. So if you guys think of something, just drop it in the channel and I will um, dive into the questions at the end of this for 20 or 30 minutes. Next thing, you guys, is understanding marketing funnels. Um, marketing funnels are... Uh, the, the whole the whole reason you guys are here, right? Uh, when we talk about business, we have leads, conversions, and operations. I'm going to talk a little bit about sales process, but I want to start with the leads part, right? We talked about the foundational pieces of systems and software you need to have. Now I'm going to talk about actual marketing funnels and how to build your own funnel across the board. So the first thing you guys that I always teach, I'm huge on, I built my business on it over the last seven years, is cold calling. 
And uh, cold calling to me is something that's been around for a long, long time. You don't run into a lot of the compliance issues, a lot of the legal issues that you do with texting and other marketing channels that people do. I'm not a big fan of texting. I'm not a big fan of things um, that people use that aren't, again, I'm going to build a business that's going to be around forever. So the systems, processes, tools we build, I want to work in any market cycle. And texting for me has never been a, a, a viable option for that. So what is um, cold calling is? And so I'm going to talk about first how to build your old cold calling, your own cold calling funnel for um, single family and commercial. I'm going to talk about how to build them if you don't want to build them yourself. So on the single family side of things, you guys, uh, when I first built my first cold call funnel, we were struggling to get scale back in like 2018, 2019. Uh, I had just gotten my first big office. We had hired a bunch of sales guys. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to hire, how to train, how to manage, how to delegate, but I said, screw it, we're going to give it a shot. And so I signed a personally guaranteed office space in Renton um, on Benson Hill, uh, if you guys are familiar with the area, and uh, brought eight, eight sales guys in the door and we started getting after it and started trying to find ways to do more deals. And with that came the need for leads. And so what I went out and did is I went out and I got lucky. I met someone um, who was an expat living in the Philippines from the US who had worked for Verizon down there and knew how to build a call center. And so I built a mini call center as part of my business. And what the, what happened is over the next coming months, as I figured that out, we hired more cold callers. Every single cold caller I would hire, we would get one, two, three leads a day on the single family side. And so if you guys are wanting to build your own cold call machine on the single family side, the first thing you have to understand is it, it's you have to treat it like a separate business. And that can be complicated at first. But if you guys do this the right way, you can print money the rest of your life. I had a conversation today with a guy who buys a lot of multifamily. And even with what the debt market's doing right now, there's a lot of people that, that have money ready to go that need deals. So if you're sourcing multifamily or single family, cold calling is a great way to force the conversation and get leads into your pipeline. And if you got, you got, I'm all about buying back your time. So you guys at scale should not be the ones sitting there cold calling all day. There's nothing wrong with it, but you will not build a business. Again, everything I'm talking about is to build a business. You guys will not build a business, at least the business that you want. Again, something that you own that does real estate deals that makes you wealthy, not rich. You guys cannot do that without solving the first piece of the puzzle, which is L, which is leads. Um, the way they do that predictably is to build a cold call machine. So first thing you guys are going to do is now that you have your old, your whole data contact info funnel, what you guys can do is in our free course we've created, there's scripts and processes on how we run a cold call, um, how we set up our dialing system, all of that stuff is in there. What you guys are going to do is you're, if you want to build your own solution and you don't want to go hire an agency to run your cold calling for you, um, you can um, go on Upwork.com and you can hire people with telemarketing experience anywhere from 3 to $10 an hour. For a good cold caller, you guys are probably going to be between 5 and $10 an hour. If you do go this route, the one thing I want to make very clear is you do have to manage them like they are part of your team. You can't just give them a list, cross your fingers, and hope that one day they, um, they get you a deal. You have to train them, you have to manage them, you have to treat them like part of your team, which I'm going to talk more about later in this uh, class, but it's super important you guys actually pay attention to that. On the commercial side, same thing. You go out, you train them, you hire them. On the commercial side, especially though, you guys, you absolutely have to treat them like you're, you're managing and training them day in and day out because commercial assets are more complicated. The sellers are more educated. It's a much more difficult process across the board. So a single family and commercial. On the single family side, if you guys want to hire it out, and I am affiliated with this company, I'm not going to spend time selling it. You want it? There's a bunch of different cold call companies out there. But easybuttonleads.com is my cold call company. That's the company I talked about that I started for my business. Um, that then now we service other people's companies as well on the single family side. On the commercial side, you guys, towards the end of this webinar, I'm going to put a link towards the bottom of the webinar. You guys will be able to click on a link if you want to learn more about building out um, your commercial funnel as well, as well as your single family. That's all going to be there. So don't worry. And yes, I'm still seeing messages. You're all going to get an email. You're all going to get a free course. You're all going to get all these resources and email. My team's going to make sure of it. Um, and if you guys, for whatever reason, don't, just drop us an email, send me a DM, and, and we'll get it figured out. Um, so now I'm going to go through each marketing channel. So cold calling, those, those are the really two options. I'm not going to teach texting. I don't like texting. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's a, a compliant legal or ethical way to market based on the current laws. Um, okay. So then we, then we have, uh, mail. Everyone knows what direct mail is. I grew up in a family. Uh, my mom was a real estate agent for years and she had her farm area and she was, um, sending out mailers all the time. I think it's a terrible way to market. If you want to build a big business, it's a good thing to have. But unless you have five to $10,000 a month, 
going to light on fire and not worry about, it's hard to do mail at scale um, because mail was very cyclical marketing. What I mean by that is one year you might get a four extra turn on mail. One year you might get a zero X, one extra turn on mail um, because of the fact that uh, it's it's so hit and miss. And you, any investor, I know guys that have been around for 30 years, same thing. One year they'll crush it. The next year uh, it will not work. And the reality is, is you want to build your business again on things that you know are going to work no matter the, the market cycle. That, I'm so big on that. I can't tell you the amount of messages I got when the market turned was at last May-ish when the rates started going up from wholesalers and flippers saying, hey, cool, I'm, I'm pretty much out of business. I said, because you built the business based on being able to buy any property or do any deal and sit there and wait six months and your, your property is going to appreciate 50, 60, 70 grand and there's your profit. You can mess up on your rehab. You can mess up on your marketing. You can mess up on operating the deal and it doesn't really matter because you're saved by the market. The reality is now you actually have to be good at real estate. Okay, you actually have to know what you're doing. And that's a good thing. Um, that, that makes it a win, win, win for everyone. Uh, but you guys have to be building a business that's, that's meant for long term and works in any market. And cold calling allows you to do that. Texting does not. Mail's tricky. You guys have a big marketing budget. You can do it. And a little trick here, if you're going to do mail, once you skip trace a list, um, for example, with cold calling, or uh, when, I, when you skip trace a list like, a list like I talked about earlier in this webinar, okay, when I go and I buy a, da a, a data set, from PropStream, from uh, Prospect Now, wherever it is, I put it into a service like Easy Button Skip Trace, and I get phone numbers and emails. A good skip tracing company is going to send you back a third address. We call this the golden address. And what the golden address is, it's people that have recently updated their their mailing address with the credit bureau. So if you guys know you you move, the credit bureau eventually picks up on that, even if you don't tell them yourself. And all of your mail, all of your credit cards, all of everyone that wants to contact you is going to start sending you stuff to that mailing address. Why is that important? Well, that golden address, about 5% of people, people, three to five change that per year statistically. So if we skip trace a list and it comes back with a new address for a hundred of our thousand people, those are going to be prospects that are getting the least amount of mail to their property. And so if you guys are building a mailing farm on a low budget, I recommend just mailing to those people to start. You'll get a much better response rate and much more success. Okay, after mail, we guys, we have what a lot of people do, right? Which is which is online paid ads. That's pay-per-click where you're ranking on Google. That's SEO, search engine optimization. That's Facebook ads. That can be paid social media ads, all of that stuff. I do like that as brand building, as supplementary marketing. But again, I don't like that as a core marketing strategy for a business. I have never once met a real estate agent that has turned on Zillow leads and kept it on for years. Why? Because it's so hit and miss. I've never once met an investor that's turned on pay-per-click or turned on SEO or turned on Facebook ads and ran it for four years straight. Why? Because of the fact that, again, it's it's so hit and miss. It's so up and down. I've met dozens of investors who have cold called for 7, 10, 20, 30 years. Why? Because it works in any market cycle. You can force the conversation. It's not going anywhere when you do it right. And there's there's way less variation in, um, in what happens after you spend the money. Those are the core marketing strategies. Uh, one of the one of the biggest, I'll give you guys one more tip on the mail side too before I move on that I just thought of. It's called, uh, they're called video postcards. And so what you guys can do, for example, especially if you're going after development sites or very unique, low volume assets. By low volume, I mean, you're going after, for example, mobile home parks. And there's only 20 of them that meet your criteria. What you can do is you can send out video postcards. So you can buy these on Alibaba or you can get them from local vendors in the United States. And what you can do is you can preset a video to play in this L LCD screen anywhere from three, 30 seconds to a minute and a half. And when they open that piece of mail, it's going to play a video for them. Um, it's a little more expensive, but if you're doing very, um, uh, very focused, uh, cornered off marketing to a low volume asset class, I recommend trying it out. And so what you could do, if you have a seller you've worked with of say a 20 unit multifamily building, which what you can do is you can go to that person, have them record a video testimonial for you. Do the work, guys. Don't be lazy. Meet them at the title and escrow company. Go freaking drive to their house and film them. It's not hard. You can film them on your iPhone. 30 seconds talking about how good of a company you are to work with and what property they sold to you. Then guess what? You're going to send out these postcards. Bob, who owns 20 self-storage facilities, all he does is get mail in his inbox every day. He's going to open yours. It's going to be a video with a seller saying how good you are to work with who do you think that guy is calling? Probably you. Um, so that's one more little tip there on the mailing side. If you guys have a very small subset that's very niche down that you want to focus on and maximize um, your mail campaign, I recommend going with some video postcards, change it up. Uh, you will get a significantly higher response rate. Okay. Um, 
as with all marketing, you guys, it's it's a volume and numbers game. Okay, I, I can't tell the amount of time, the amount of DMs I get from real estate investors, real estate agents, um, and people in this space that we all are in, which is a small community saying, hey, Cole, I've turned on cold calling. It's two months and I haven't gotten a deal. You guys is lead to contract and marketing. So when you put out a marketing piece, whether that's a mailer, a cold call, digital ads, whatever, from the time you get a lead, and what often lead is someone says, yes, they want to sell. And then to me, it's the next six months. If they say, yes, I want to sell in the next six months, that's a lead. They say, oh, I might want to sell in the next three years. That's not a lead. So if they want to sell in the next six months and they are a lead, it's going to on average 90 to 120 days until you have a contract signed, no matter what you are doing. So you guys have to understand when you're building these marketing funnels out, you're always 90 to 180 days in advance in your pipeline. So if you start spending today, I don't want to get a DM from you next month saying, hey, cool, I spent, I maxed out my credit card to send out postcards. And two weeks later, I haven't gotten a deal. I don't want to hear that because it's 90 to, sorry, it's 90 to 180 days and sometimes longer. We've done a lot of deals where it's a year, two years, three years of nurturement, which I'm going to talk about later of how to properly nurture off-market leads. But that's the reality of it. And most agents, investors are just lazy. You guys don't want to do the work. And the reality is you're, you're 100, 200 calls, follow-up calls away from usually 50, 100, $200,000 check. But you don't want to do it, which is fine. I'm lazy too, to be honest. That's why I got so good at hiring and delegating and things of that nature. Um, so on that point, you guys, moving past video postcard, uh, moving past understanding marketing returns, you should get a three to four X return in real estate marketing if you're doing everything the right way. Okay. Let's talk lead intake. We've talked marketing channels, you guys. Um, it's not rocket science. None of this is rocket science, but I, I want to I want to get through this stuff because I want to spend a lot of time on hiring and building a company and delegating and things of that nature. So um, lead intake, you guys, in, in this business, if, if you start spending money on ads or any kind of ads, any kinds of media, and if you own a business and you're not spending money on ads, you don't have a business. Um, I see people asking, yes, this is going to be a recording. You guys will all get this these recordings. Um but if, if you are spending any money, if you have owned a business, you're not spending money on ads, you don't have a business. Um, organic is awesome. Referrals are awesome if you're an agent. But if you want to build a business, you have to have a reliable source of paid media. Okay, paid client, not paid media, paid client acquisition. Um, and if you do, number one mistake I see investors make is they don't have, a, which is a very basic concept, speed to lead. Then I'll give you an example. I have a one-on-one program where I work with people one-on-one once a week, um, just us two on a Zoom call. And I had a guy in this in the get on a call with me, who hired a cold caller, and he said, "Hey Cole, I just can't figure out how to close these leads." And I so I said, "Okay, let's dive in, man." And we dove in, and he had he had a lead that came in on a Thursday. I was talking to him on a Friday. A lead that came in on a Thursday, and I looked at the notes. It was a guy that recently went through a divorce and was like ready to sell now. The notes from the cold caller said, "Like I'm ready to freaking sell this and offload this house right now." And the next day, when I talked to him, we went through his notes and we 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 found that conversation. We found those notes. And I said, I bet you if you call this guy right now, he's already sold the property. And this is 36 hours later. And he gets him on the phone. The guy says, I appreciate your offer, but I sold that property last night. Because the reality is, once you spark someone's interest, they're going to go online, they're going to submit forms to other companies, they're going to have multiple conversations, whatever kind of asset they're selling. So you have to focus really, really, really in depth on making sure you guys have speed delete. It should be 30 minutes to an hour. And if it's not, it should definitely be same day. If you're paying for leads, if you're a broker, if you're an investor, whatever it is, if you're paying for leads and you do not get uh, on the phone with that lead in 30 to 60 minutes, you're a lot of times you're wasting money because people are, people they don't make decisions quickly a lot of the time. But usually, they're able to tell if you're a good business owner or not based on follow up. If someone called me about my car, said, "Hey, Cole, do you want to sell your car?" and I said, "Yeah, sure, make me an offer," and I didn't hear from them for three days, I'm not going to take that company seriously again. And you have to think of yourself like a business. Even if you're a one-man show, think of yourself like a business and put yourself in the shoes of your seller. That's really all a sales is in this business. Okay. So um, the the main thing you got, but after lead intake, you guys, is just ruthless follow-up. And in the free course I send you, I've made hours upon hours upon hours. You guys are all going to get of sales tips and trainings, nuances. But the reality is most of what sales is is ruthless follow-up. A lot of times, you guys, the way we've trained our sales team over the years is you need to make three, four, five, or six touch points a day. We call it the six times six blitz. Where once a lead comes in the door, they need to be touched six times a day for six days straight to give ourselves the best chance. And a touch point is a text message, it's a phone call, it's a voicemail, it's an email. So a mix of those four 
six touch points a day for six days. That's our gold standard to get someone back on the phone and really start building a relationship with them and building our pipeline. Calling someone once a week or twice a week or once a month or every other month that is in your pipeline, you don't, that, you don't, you don't own that lead. That is not part of your pipeline. So if you're paying for lead flow, if you're paying for marketing and you're getting leads in the door, you're spending money on that for whatever asset class you're chasing down and you're not spending time mastering the follow-up and understanding that you need to do the work, it doesn't matter. So don't spend money on marketing if you're not going to do the follow-up calls. Just just don't. Um, okay. So we've gotten through a lot, guys. I know I talk quick. Again, this is all recorded, so you're going to get recordings. Um, I really want to talk about building your team, making your first few hires. Because most of you guys right now, you're doing so much work that you should just not be doing. The reality is that if you are making $50,000 or more per year from your, from your real estate business, from whatever you are doing, you can already afford to start hiring people overseas to come in and take a lot of the work off your plate. People have a misconception also of people overseas and um, what that looks like. And these people, they're usually very educated. They usually speak very good English and they usually have a lot of experience working remote. And uh, delegation and, and uh, building an organization is a muscle you have to build. No one wakes up and they make their first hire and it goes well. But no matter what you guys are doing, you are truly one hire away from literally changing your life and making your business enjoyable, right? Because a lot of you guys, you just have busyness right now. You're just busy. You're going to the coffee shop. You're posting on Facebook. You're, you're cold calling here and there. You, you have, you have, there's no system. There's no process. It's just you running around with your head on fire. And somehow you, you get another check. The next check keeps coming. And you keep doing the same thing over and over again, but it's reinforcing the wrong thing, right? Like I, I work, I was working on my golf swing with my instructor this week and the same thing. He's like, you can probably sw- continue to swing this way and play okay golf, but you're reinforcing the wrong swing. So every time you hit a good golf uh, golf ball and you get happy, you're reinforcing a bad technique. And most of you guys, you're reinforcing bad technique and you're building a prison for yourself because you have an ego around being busy and hustling, okay? If you are building a business and you have the resources to hire, it is my opinion, if you live in the United States of America, you are being an irresponsible business owner because you now have a job and the resources to give that job to someone else. And they will usually do it much better than you because take and, and take and write this down. Someone, so let's say right now you're, you're in a, you, you fix and flip houses, you drive all your job sites, you do your marketing, you call the sellers, you do the fall up, you do everything. Someone coming in and doing one of those roles, for example, sales every single day at 60% of your capacity, because they're probably not going to be as good at you at first, but if they do it, even 60% of the capacity that you do it, but they do it every single day. That's much better than you doing it for two hours on Monday and two hours on Fridays while you're stressed, while you're tired, while you're taking the kids to school, while you have a million other things going on. So someone doing what you already do at 70% of how good you do it, but they do it every single day is a much better option than you continuing to do that every single day. So I'm going to talk about a concept called a delegation ladder. And this is how I built all my companies. The first part of that is this is admin. So um, we have to fill out admin tasks. Then we go to fulfillment. Then we go to marketing then sales and leadership. I'm going to talk through each one. So let's say I'm new into sourcing my own deals. And I just listened to Cole, Cole's webinar and he's talking about skip trace that, data this. He's talking about setting up marketing campaigns. He's talking about all this crap that I just do not understand. The first thing that I would want you to do once you, once you get a deal or two in the door is go make your first hire through a company like Upwork.com. Go hire a 4 or $5 an hour virtual assistant to have them do all the admin work. Admin work is repeatable work that's not client facing, that doesn't have direct impact on revenue. Because pulling a list, skip tracing list, isn't direct revenue impact. Okay, but you can hand that off very quickly. And let's talk about handing work off. You can hand a task off with a Loom video and a Lily, you, you, here's, here's a quick strategy. You record it in a Loom video, yourself doing it, you put it in a Google Drive, in a Dropbox, in Notion, whatever platform you use. You record yourself doing that task. You write out a process, you do it live with them one time, you hand it to them to do, and then you give them two other things, a trigger and a definition of done. So once you hand someone a task, you hire off Upwork, give them a trigger. So how they know to do that task is that they do it every single Monday. If it's pulling list, do they do it every single month on the first of the month? What triggers them to do that task? And then what's the definition of done? How do they know they're done? And what do they do when they're done? Do they tell you, do they send you a Slack message, send you an email? And that'll eliminate all the micromanaging you need. So that's admin. Fulfillment, that's things like transaction coordination. That's things like paperwork. That's things um, that are, that are back-end um, fulfillment-related activities. Um, 
in whatever business you're building. And that's the second thing you want to, you can usually still get that to overseas talent. Then you have marketing. Marketing is cold calling. Marketing is uh, digital media. For most of you guys, you can get that off your plate right away um, by literally just hiring an agency for digital media or for marketing. I don't recommend you guys doing your own marketing at first, um, be, uh, if you're fo- depending on what you're focused on. If you're focused on building a portfolio and doing big deals, a lot of times you can hire out the marketing if you have the resources. Then you have sales. That's the last thing you ever want to hire for. So many investors, they go like, oh, I don't like being on the phone. I'm going to go hire a salesperson to close my deals. But they don't have enough lead flow. That salesperson is going to churn. And every single month, they're going to have a new salesperson. And they're never going to have someone work for them long enough to actually get their feet under them and figure it out. So again, talk about leads. Under leads is conversion. Underneath conversion is operations. So conversion is um, is the sales part of your business. And I we always house hire salespersons last. For example, one of my companies, um, my, my call center, uh, it's, a, it's a very big business. And until we were at multiple millions of dollars per year in recurring revenue, we didn't go out and build a sales team because we didn't have enough leads. And so you got to think in generalists and specialists. There's three phases a company goes through. It goes through a startup, it goes through a scale up, and it goes through really self-preservation. Okay, so in a, in a startup phase, you're hustling, you're running around with your hair on fire, you're doing everything. Um, in a scale up phase, you're starting to build systems, build people, build infrastructure. Okay, then at the scale phase, and then you get the preservation, which is preserving assets and, and protection, attorneys, all that kind of boring stuff. Um, but you guys have to understand if you're in a in, in a phase of your business where you don't have leads coming in every single day, you don't have your paid um, lead acquisition, your client acquisition strategy, you can't build a sales team. Um, so we have to we have to treat this ladder like almost like a bible in our business. And if you do that, if you fill the admin seats with, with overseas talent, five dollars an hour. Then you fill the um, the um, fulfillment seats. Then you f- then hire out your marketing. Then you go hire out a salesperson once your marketing numbers are hit. Then you can move up to a leadership seat where your job is really to own a business. And that still means you're involved, you guys. This, is, this isn't a, a magical, you're sitting on a beach shipping memo, so that doesn't exist. The wealthiest guys I know, you guys, they're still bringing the energy, driving vision, and involved in their companies. If you are on this webinar hoping for a get rich thing where you ride off into the sunset, and uh, you never have to worry about money again. That's not what I teach um, at all. I don't believe in that. I, I believe if you, if you have the ambition to build the business to a point where you're in the leadership seat, leadership seat you're not going to ever really um, let that go because it's it's a game at that point. So those are the blocks, guys. Those those are the building blocks. I want you guys to understand and take from this when, you, when it comes to building your team. And the biggest thing of that is so many of you guys would benefit from an overseas hire. Okay, that can literally be, you could have it done in two days from now. If you went on tonight and you put out a job out on Upwork, it takes five minutes. Um, we'll add to the free course, all of our hiring and onboarding tools. You create onboarding, which is literally just write down everything you do every single day, what you can hand off that's admin related, create the process I just said with a loom video, a trigger with a definition of done and train it on them one time, have them report to you once per week, meet with them once per week. And you guys can get probably 80% of the work you guys are all doing, you can probably get done right away with an overseas ex- executive assistant hire. Okay, calendar, scheduling, bills, um, miscellaneous crap, um, payroll, if you have payroll, uh, marketing, list pulling, organizing your CRM, tracking your KPIs, all of these things, you guys, you can probably hand off by the end of this week if you, if you, if you took a swing at it. But you have to take swings because again, delegation is a muscle and something you have to practice day in and day out. So you guys, we're about uh, three quarters of the way through this. I'm going to, before we get into Q&A, and a lot of the best nuggets usually come from Q&A, I am going to talk about um, a, l- a little bit here about um, uh, as, as you grow in an organization, how to, how to build a business that's not built on micromanaging. Because if you guys want to build a business, it's going to come down to hiring. And the two things that I've seen um, to help you stay away from from micromanaging is one data, and then two uh, measuring against that data. It's simple. So if you guys own a business and you and I cannot ask you right now every number in your business, so you cannot pull it up for me. You don't own a business because you're guessing. You're making future decision based on based on a, uh, an assumption. So for example, if you ask me, hey Cole, what are the what are the numbers of one of your companies? I'm going to be able to pull up a, a chart and show you everything. How many leads we get. What's our cost per lead? Well, how many days does our lead take to close? How many days does the lead take for our sales team to talk to them? Everything is tracked because I want to make decisions as a business owner off data. And then when I make a hire, I want to have data to coach them. If you hire someone and you wake up one day frustrated, like a lot of people do, and you get frustrated with them for no reason, you don't have data. You don't really know if they're doing their job well or not. But if you have the data, 
and you hire someone to do all your admin work and they're doing your data and skip tracing. And on the first of each, each month, you're giving them a trigger and a definition of done. And then it's the second of the month and you're and that task isn't done. Now you can go to them and say, hey, this was not done. And you can pivot and adjust in a responsible way. And that's how you be that's how you become a good leader. Because good leaders do not micromanage. And if you guys want to build, you know, millions of millions and millions of dollars a year in business and build real wealth and build a real business and and truly be, you know, have a life where it's your business serves your life and not the other way around. The number one thing you have to focus on is becoming a leader. Your clients want to work with a leader if you have clients. There's a sorry guys, there's a jet flying above me right now too by a military base. But if you guys are um you guys want to build a business and you want to, you know, get out of the hamster wheel of always chasing down the next deal, it's something that you absolutely 100% have to work on day in, day out. Um, and, th- and that's the wrap there, guys. Um, before we get into questions, a couple of things to highlight again. You're going to get a free course to your email. Um, you are going to get, once this webinar ends, you guys, you're going to get redirected um, to a massive, massive, massive um, thing we built out for you guys. Where you guys can book a strategy call. I'll key, our team will walk you through a free strategy call if you guys need more assistance, but the free course has so much. Um, there's, there's a lot I have out there on my YouTube, on my podcast, uh, a lot of going into the nuance of what I talk about here. And uh, I'm really excited to see what questions you guys have and so you guys build uh, your, your off-market real estate machines and do as many deals as you want. So if you guys have questions, uh, drop them in the, in the chat. I'm going to scroll through these right now where you guys do and answer ones that were previously asked. Um, right now. So if you guys do have questions that you're hanging out here, go ahead and, and throw them down. Tips for vacant land off-market acquisition. It's it's honestly the same thing, James. Um, if you're doing vacant land acquisition, you want to treat it like single family, right? The, the underwriting is is a little different in the sense of your underwriting, not your, you're not underwriting, you don't have like an exact formula for it really. Like my, our underwriting thing on vacant land has always been what we want to find recently built homes. Um, newly built homes in that area that, that fit that lot size, find out what kind of work's been done for that lot. On the marketing side, um, you can pull vacant land lists um, from resources like ListSource and PropStream. It's the same exact marketing funnel. Um, there's no real like tip or trick to it. And usually you can actually generate more leads for vacant land. Um, what CRM do you use and how do you have it integrated with sequential marketing management? Great question. That's a pretty in, That's a pretty nuanced question. So, we we use Podio. We have a very built out version of Podio that's tens of thousands of dollars into it at this point. Um, we we do all of our marketing management out of a software called reisift.com. Reisift.com. That's where we do all of our marketing management out of that tracks our marketing cycles and things of that nature. I'm on my first Upwork hire. How does how much does Accent play into this? Accent doesn't really matter if they're not client facing, if they're not cold calling for you, if they're not talking to clients, doing transaction work for you. And they are simply doing admin work for you. As long as you can understand them, they can type okay. You can. We've had we have people that were, have worked for us uh, for four or five years now on the admin side that don't speak great English at all. A lot of times aren't even very conversational, but they can type it fine and they're good at their job. Um, so if they're not client facing, you should be fine. How much is it for the off market upgrade academy? Um, depends. Depends on what your business looks like. Depends on what you need. I don't, again, I don't want to spend time here or telling you guys anything. I want to focus on on getting questions answered. Uh, I have fumbled 90% of leads due to lack of confidence in presenting my offer. Because I struggle to have consistent leads come in, I'm so nervous to lose them. Is it common to have most offers? Yeah, you guys are going to, and that's the misunderstanding about sales, is you guys are going to have 95, 90, 99%. If you guys got to think, if you call 100 sellers in a day and you made them all an offer and 99 reject you and just one accepts your offer, that could be $50,000 check or for a lot of you guys, a lot more money. So the thing is, like every single no is getting you way closer to yes. And so, it, and a lot of that's just built over time. You kind of build a callus to getting told F off or you're getting by, by sellers, but you should, Logan, the reality is not fumbling leads because honestly, no dollar is wasted if you're building the skills. And it sounds like you are on the phone, man. So I wouldn't worry about like not being perfect on the call. Or not. I, I just take the pressure off yourself. Say, if I don't do a deal for the next year, awesome. Um, but I'm going to call my leads every day. I'm going to keep getting better. And guess what? You're going to, it's going to, it's going to work out. You're going to do deals. Do you make offers on all leads, even the non-motivated? What's your process for managing? No, we don't make offers on all leads at all. Uh, we don't make offers to anyone if they're not actually, they don't meet our uh, motivation criteria. So what we do, you guys, is we, we never pre-underwrite a home. So if a lead comes into our system in any asset class, we're not pre-underwriting that property. We're getting on the phone with them and our lead management lead intake process, which I'll do another webinar class on later. 
and we go, we deep dive with them on what their situation is. Um, and they actually have motivation and, and getting to know them because we, we don't want to have a lead come in and just be making offers. It doesn't work. I bought real estate value at around 20 million right now. I have only a direct marketer of purchasing personally, you know, machine for generating leads, just driving, cold calling, looking to incorporate, flipping mobile family, all that. What's my first hire striker and what system do we recommend a building around? That is a complicated question. Striker, why don't you find me on Instagram, Colbert Johnson, shoot me a DM and I will chat with you there and I'll help you answer that question because that's that's a pretty nuanced question there. Can you go over the admin task you would offload to a VA again? Absolutely, Brennan. I would start with first anything that um, that comes to mind for you. When you're a good exercise is is right track your day in thirty minute increments for two weeks, and you'll see what admin tasks you're doing. But in a real estate business, I like to start with all baseline like CRM maintenance, KPI tracking. I like to start with uh, data list pulling, um, uh, system cleanup, random tasks, random projects, research projects, anything that um, is is draining your energy on an admin level. Okay. Can you do a break quick down? Can you do a quick breakdown task you can delegate to overseas hires? I just did that, Mitchell. Um, too. How many cold caller VAs or calling hours a week do you think you need to get about one? If you want a one deal a month from cold calling, you need one to three leads per day. Okay, that's normally a full eight hour calling day. And if the cold caller is good, they call eight hours a day. You'll get one to three a day. You'll get anywhere from thirty to forty leads per month. And some markets, that's enough. If you're in like, for example, if you're in Seattle. You probably need double that. You're probably going to be 60 to 80 leads to a contract and, and residential and probably a slightly less in commercial. Uh, but it is a volume thing. So you want to make sure you have enough leads in the door. Um, regarding the three predictive di- data sets you mentioned, I caught two of them, Audantic and really Flow. The third one, Randy, was Prospect Now, prospectnow.com. You use VAs to schedule photos for the properties. For us, photo scheduling has always been on TC's shoulder, our transaction coordination team. But again, I know people that have TC's that are overseas. So you can absolutely have a virtual admin person schedule your walkthrough, schedule your pictures, talk to buyers, talk to sellers. Um, you can have them do anything. It's just up to you how far you want to push them based on their their English speaking ability. Um, yep, Dylan got that answer. Do you use VAs driving for dollars using Google? Nope, Brad, we don't do VA driving for dollars. Um, Google Maps is so funky. I, I don't like that very much. Um, what else do we have here? Zach, if you... Um, kind of the test is this. If there's a Chick-fil-A where you live, you have a big enough market to um, to start marketing in your backyard. That's kind of the, the test. But I recommend everyone start in their backyard. A lot of people should stay in their backyard. You can do $5, $10 million a year and no one even know who you are really because there's so much opportunity out there in every single market. Uh, are you with Foursquare Real Estate? I am not with Foursquare Real Estate. Uh, do you do any Facebook ads? Uh, I do not do any Facebook ads. Um, we have done in the past. I don't love it for off-market real estate. Uh, for buyers though, we've used Facebook ads to attract buyers for our deals for sure. Can you touch on building out the Dispo arm? Striker, uh, again, man, shoot me a DM on Instagram. That's a more nuanced question. Okay, I'll do two more, you guys. One to, one to bring on REI, SIF type expense. Connor, send me a DM on Instagram, man. Um, Striker, there you go, man. You got four Chick-fil-A's. If I didn't want to build a lead generation machine by myself, can you build one for us? Yes, Joshua, we do that all the time for people. Um, I put the link, I think, already up on the screen. But after this, you guys will get redirected if you want to talk to my team more about that. You guys need more hand-holding. Um, James, for Easy Button Leads, I'm not going to go into price right now, but you can book a strategy call on easybuttonleads.com. Um, Brad, same thing. You, you can book a strategy call there. Too. Cool, guys, we'll wrap up. Announcement. First off, I want to shout out Jan, the man. Um, he was he put this on with me, um, put a lot of effort into marketing to you guys, so you guys could uh, hear about it and jump on. My team, Blake, MJ, Van, uh, David, Josh, everyone that's helped out um, with setting this up. Appreciate you guys. And again, if you guys need help with anything on the cold calling side, you can go to easybuttonleads.com. Um, you can, if you need help with your real estate business, you go to offmarketoperator.com. Um, and, but a lot of the stuff's out there for free, you guys. If you guys go to my YouTube, you can get like an MBA in real estate off-market acquisitions in a couple of days just by going through uh, through my YouTube and my podcast and stuff. So Appreciate you guys all for jumping on. Um, you guys can in- DM me on Instagram at any time. Um, that's at Colbert Johnson. That's where I'm the most responsive. If you need anything at all, I'm very responsive. I, I, I talked to a lot of you guys already on the phone and text. And I want to see you guys all crushing deals because there's a lot of deals and there is not enough people out there sourcing deals. That's just the reality of it. This is such a big pond that we plan. 
And there's there's so much out there for you guys. So I'm going to end this webinar, you guys. If you stay on, it'll redirect you um, if you want to learn more about what we do. But you guys are going to get an email from us with everything we talked about. Appreciate everyone.